All right, Dan. Wow, what a night for you. Uh, UFC Melbourne, biggest win in your career by far. Chris Camozzi said he wanted to take a holiday and bring his family down here and relax. It didn't quite go his way. Talk to us about the feeling you got from the reaction of the crowd after you won that fight because it was a memorable moment for all the Melbournians in attendance. Yeah, it was really good. I thought I was close to getting a stoppage at the end. I mean, it all gets a bit fuzzy towards the end. Um, and I had him in a good position ground and pound wise. But yeah, it was great. It's great. I was very tired at the end of the fight, but it was a, a good reaction from the crowd. It's great to find your hometown. Been lucky enough to do it two years running now. It was interesting because when we spoke to you, you said, oh, I was done with the Olympics. Maybe the, the dad bod was in, in effect because I'd have you snacks over there. But tonight you looked like you were in great shape. We saw some more advancement in your striking game. Talk to us about the preparation for this fight because it seemed like you might have underplayed it a little bit. We saw almost K1 Dame Kelly tonight. <laughs> I work really hard. I'm really lucky I've got some really good a really good Southport sparring partner who's in my corner, Brett Franklin, and he's high, high level Thai boxing and my coach, Andy Colgrave. And yeah, I think I beat him in this, well, I beat him in the stand up tonight. So, so it, was, it was really good. And yeah, he's, it's gonna be a long trip home for the poor fella. So. Uh, Dan, Chris said he had an elbow with your name on it and that elbow f happened to hit in the forehead and you've got a bit of uh, claret there and I understand a few stitches. What's, um, what's the damage there on your head? Uh, 12 stitches. He, he didn't hurt me with anything standing. It's just the cuts. He was, he's very, very accurate with his elbows, obviously. And um, yeah, I think the blood annoyed him as much as it annoyed me, to be honest, especially when I was on top in the second round. The blood was pouring in his face as well when, we were, when I was trying to ground and pound him. So, so yeah. What's next? Uh, I'd like to fight in the first part of next year, either in um, Vegas at the start of March or preferably in, um, in London after that on the 18th. I reckon I'm getting close to fighting someone who's ranked now. That's three in a row. I've had a step up every time. So, yeah, so I reckon I'm close to a ranked opponent. We'll, we'll talk. I, I, we need to talk to the, new, uh, to the new matchmaker. I haven't actually met Mick Maynard yet. So, so once I've had a chat to him and introduced myself, we'll see where we're at. Time to call someone out, maybe. Anyone 10 to 15, I'm happy. I'm happy to fight. Dale, this being your son's birthday, can you talk about the emotion? I imagine it had to be uh, you know, a pretty up and down day for you and, and, and a powerful day for you. Absolutely, I spoke to Eric this morning. Um, and I mean, it's no secret that uh, my oldest son has some health issues. So this is extra special today. Um, I mean, he's an inspiration. He goes about his business. We give him injections every day. He's medicated about 20 times a day and he all takes it all in his stride. I mean, what I do is easy compared to what he has to deal with every single day. And he's a happy, very happy kid and embraces life. And yeah, we can all learn a lot from him. I wonder, I mean, did you have to tap into that a little bit during this? I mean, this was, uh, uh, it seemed like a heck of a struggle. You said he didn't hurt you on the feet, but with all the blood and the back and forth, I mean, it looked like a kind of fight where you had to dig deep. Yeah, well, I think I've shown now that just about every fight I have to dig deep to uh, get over the line. I might not be the most skillful guy in a whole heap of areas, but I make up for it in uh, the capacity to push forward and you know, take a little bit of damage and keep going. And yeah, that was no different today. I was very tired at the end of this fight, but it was it was fine. It was fine, except for this is more cosmetic than anything. He didn't hurt me on the feet at all. He didn't kick as much as I thought he would. His jab, his jab was always in my face, but it wasn't damaging at all. The elbows obviously caused a lot of the damage, and and I think I hit him a lot with my cross. So I think I think I I won, and made him more worried standing than than he expected. I think that surprised him a little bit. As you look forward, I mean, what is the ceiling? What's the final goal? I mean, I think a lot of us, you know, we see your career starting kind of late in life and we say the bubble's got to burst eventually and you just keep pulling out wins. Where do you want to take this thing and, and what do you think the ceiling is for you? No ceiling. It's no ceiling at all. And uh, I mean, guys in the media, some of them say, you know, he should retire, he should do this and that. Even after my last fight, there's no ceiling. We'll, we'll keep going. I keep improving. My striking's improving. I came to it late. Everything's going along okay. I've said before, as long as my body holds up, I'll be keep going forward. I mean, I'm on a three-fight win streak now. Everything's going all right. They're exciting fights. So, no ceiling. No ceiling. Dan, Kamozi specifically called you out, and you said maybe he took you lightly. Are you surprised that people keep taking a four-time Olympic judoku to, like, in a grappling match and then end up on their butts? Uh, look, 
I'm, I'm older, I'm 39. Uh, apparently I move like a robot and someone who can't, can't strike. Kamozi's what, that, that was his 18th fight in the UFC and I was as comfortable in there as he was. So uh, I hope they keep underestimating me and uh, keeping me the underdog. I'm, I'm happy with that. And if I keep fighting better guys, it's gonna happen. Every time I'm gonna come up against someone, they're gonna say, oh, oh I don't know how he still keeps doing it. Uh, there's some kind of mystery. Oh, what's going on? And, and that's fine with me. Just keep making the underdog and I'll keep carrying on. Obviously, there was a, a lot of blood in the second round and you got on top of him. Did you specifically think that if I can get on top of him and actually have that blood pouring in his face, it might make him a bit uncomfortable? <laughs> um, no, no, but I could tell it, he didn't like it. I mean, it was, yeah, it was, it was a river. Thing is, you get one little cut. I mean, this isn't a little cut on your head and it pours and pours and this is a big cut and it poured, but he did it to me. So bad luck if he's on his back. Ultimate underdog. <laughs> yeah, you seem to be the underdog in every fight that you uh, to participate in. I mean, do you expect to be favoured in any, any fight coming up? Uh, no, not if I keep fighting better guys, and I really don't care. Uh, we, we've got a program and uh, a training structure that's working really well, and the odds make no difference to us at all. Did Kamosi do what you expected or, or planned for in, in the Octagon tonight? Because you seem to be stalking him a lot and he seemed to be uh, moving around trying to stay away. Obviously, you were trying to get that takedown. He was try, trying to use that jab to pick you apart, but uh, you had some success on the feet as well. But did it all go to the plan? Um, I thought he'd be easier to take down. I got exactly what I wanted on him in the second round to do the trip. He was harder to hold on to than I thought, but... Possibly that's because of all the blood as well. I thought he'd kick more, and I'm happy with how much success I had on the feet with him. So apart from the takedown not coming as easily and him not kicking as much, everything else went to plan. We're always going to pressure forward on him. Did you actually think that the fight was stopped at the end of the third? Yes. Yeah, so I did. you thought you won yeah, by TKO? I thought I won by TKO. And I mean, you just don't know. I couldn't hear the clapping. Everything was really loud, and you're punching away, and you're tired, and yeah. It's still good to get up when you're on top of the end of the fight and stick your hands in the air anyway. You mentioned how you wanted uh, somebody sort of in the top 15. I'm going to rattle off a couple of names to you, and I just want to see which one stands out to you <laughs> since we're all having fun here. We've got Tim Boach, Uriah Hall, or Talis Lates. Anyone stand out to you in particular? I mean, this is the moment if someone does to say, hey, this is a guy that I'd be looking to fight next. Oh, there's that guy. There's the Polish guy as well. That would be nice in um, Europe to fight. What's a Jokto? Mm -hmm. He's another Southpaw. I'm happy to keep fighting Southpaws. I'm actually doing better against them now than I am against Orthodox guys. Taylor's latest is another one. Not so keen to go to Brazil, to be honest. <laughs> um, and Boach, yeah, he's a big, strong man. That's, that's a lot of ugly in one uh, octagon, though, if him and I get in there and fight. So, Just quickly, um, Dad's Army, that's a thing. Um, over here, you, Jake, Richie, you guys all have trained together. I just want to get your reaction on Jake Matthews' performance tonight. Obviously, a few people are a little bit disappointed. He would be disappointed as well. Did you get a chance to see what happened? Did you get a chance to speak to him at all? And he's only 22 years old. What do you think about his future in the UFC? Oh, he's got a massive future. He didn't fight. Uh, he probably didn't fight that well tonight. His foot, he hurt in the first round. Uh, he's a great talent, and um, he'll bounce back. He's got a few injury concerns he needs to deal with, and yeah, he'll be back, back better and stronger uh, probably late next year, I reckon.